Mr. Negative, what's up? What are we gambling today? What do you mean, what are we gambling? I don't understand. What do you mean? What are you playing this time, RuneScape buds? Oh, gaming. You mean gaming, gaming, not gambling. I see. I see. You haven't played slots in years? Aren't you like 16 or something? You can't even play slots. I thought I had 88 mil. Yesterday at Apex was definitely a packed day, but we got some good news and also some bad news. So let's go over it because you'll probably want to know the bad news. First of all though, let's address the elephant in the room. Why did everybody's accounts get wiped yesterday? Yeah, if you didn't log on yesterday, pretty much everybody who logged on had their account wiped to some degree. I lost loads of skins, I lost an heirloom, and it was really worrying, and it took Respawn a long time to fix. Throughout the day, after the glitch first activated, they did reassure people saying they're gonna try to fix this, and around 17 hours after the glitch first occurred, we got our first bit of news. Respawn were gonna turn the servers off for one hour to successfully roll back everyone's accounts, and they did it. The servers for every single Apex player off, no one was able to start an Apex lobby, and then when the servers were turned back on, everyone's accounts were back to normal. There's one issue though. The way that this glitch occurred is that it basically rolled your accounts back to how they were exactly nine months ago, which is why you may have lost some levels and may have lost some heirlooms, but may have gained some Apex coins because nine months ago, you may have had more Apex coins than you have right now. So during the duration of this glitch, there definitely would have been a few people with some extra coins lying around that bought event packs and got lucky and got the Cobalt guitar. In fact, here's somebody on Reddit that claims they did that. Good for them, right? Well, no, because it turns out when Respawn fixed this glitch, they also deleted rounds? all of the progress that people Word. made during the 19 hour duration where this glitch was active. Which isn't good because it means if you bought a skin or got lucky and got a badge or something during this glitch, it would be deleted from your account. And this definitely happened because I bought this Watson skin and two event packs during this glitch and when Respawn fixed it, I lost those. But that shouldn't be too much of a worry because luckily, in their tweet they did say as a result of this evening's rollbacks, we're working to restore progress made throughout the course of yesterday. Meaning, if you did get an item during this 19 hour gap, you may get lucky and get it back it just depends how respawn fix this luckily though if you spent coins during this state you never truly lost them because you're basically spending coins on a version of your account from nine months ago and also before you ask yes because of this glitch respawn did delay the new rank split so they're going to announce its new date soon but it's going to be a very short split luckily the worst part of this glitch is over so let's move on because stuff came out yesterday that was unfortunately overshadowed by the glitch firstly due to everything going on yesterday you probably missed this in the news tab respawn are actually extending the april 4th event and making it it's that's fucking stupid i mean i might as well go like this oh not exchange bank might as well go claim my staffs because all those bitches Bum, bum, bum. And yeah, Watch Dogs Legion gonna do Platinum. Nice. Do yeah, the other games have a um online trophies, eh? That's kind of suck. I hate when uh games do online trophies like that, bro. It's super annoying. 
This is super annoying. I mean, any online any online um, achievement is pretty stupid, in my opinion. Any online achievement is pretty dumb, simply because you you just uh, here one second you. you like once the servers go offline for the game you can never get it back you know what i mean once the servers are offline you just never get that shit back it's just like what the hell It took forever to get to level 50. The reason they make the games take so long to get to a high level is so it keeps you playing it for a longer period of time, you know? Yeah, fun with it. It's all that matters then, right? Where is this? I don't know. BIP? The BIP. The BIP. Um, let's take one, two of those. Good enough. I'm depending where you have perfect time. Where and yeah, I don't know. I've never played Red Dead Online too. I've never played it, so I couldn't tell you. You know what I mean. Yeah, the Spider-Man games are really easy Platinums. I have the Platinum Trophy on my PlayStation, and I got every achievement on my PC as well. I actually really liked the first Spider-Man game, and I thought the entire game was really fun. Second one, still haven't played it. I'm waiting for it to come out on PC, which hopefully it does. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> yeah, man, really did go for that one? Yeah. I have quite a few platinum trophies. Well, I used to anyway. Not anymore, probably.
But back in like 10 years ago, I used to have what would be considered a lot of trophies on my PlayStation. Probably not now because there's so many new games that have come out, but. My day! Hey Gonzo, how are you, buddy? My day is pretty good. <coughs> Got done work early today. So I'm just chilling, man. Came home, had a shower. Next samurai game. I'd be interested. That'll be interesting. Nice thumbnail. Yo, you'll hate that, eh? You like that, eh? What's your job again? I remember you were talking about it. I build gas stations, dog. I buildeth and refurbisheth gas stations. Rise of the Ronin is awful. I have no idea. Oh, uh, it's the new, like, martial arts game or whatever that's coming out. I don't know. It didn't really look that interesting to me. I'm not gonna lie. Can't even cap. He luckily. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know the trailers looked amazing with Fever from AG. When different from you? Word. I don't know. The game just never looked good to me to begin with. It had good graphics, sure, but good graphics doesn't mean it's going to be a good game. You know what I mean? It just never looked like it was going to be good. In my humble opinion. But what the fuck do I know? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it reminded me of, but just not as good. Like, the animations in all the other games just look better. You know what I mean? Oh, way more stylized, yeah. No, no, I just think the other game, like, the game doesn't look bad. That's what I'm saying. The game doesn't look bad at all. But, I don't know. It's just not, it doesn't look good. Just 
but down here. Um, But Black Myth Wukong looks amazing. Have you seen the trailer? No. Never even heard of it. Honestly, never even heard of it. I want one those in my smallest fair. Oh, can this fucking person get out of the way? Jeez. This person was literally s standing on my door. No, no. Oh my god. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't tell you, man. I have no fucking clue. Uh, you know what game I'm looking forward to is the Teammate Mutant Ninja Turtles game. That's kind of like... Oh, fuck's sakes. I clicked on the wrong thing. It's kind of like the God of War game. I'm looking forward for that. Can't wait for that. The Last Ronin, I think it's called. Literally. Or whatever. It's based off of the comic. Shit looks super fucking fire. Or will be fire. And then change combat completely. We're in. I don't know, I like to make Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I'm down for it. Uh, they're working on it right now. There's no set release date, you know what I'm saying? Can I jump over this? Yeah, I fucking, I don't care about history in the slightest, I'm not gonna lie. This is my fucking, it's always been my least favorite subject in school. Like, I just don't give a fuck about history, bro. Not gonna lie. This is somewhat tied to history? Yeah, it definitely was tied to a lot of, like, history and just, uh, what's the word? Um, like, urban legend and shit. As well. Oh, I'm just grabbing the parent. Like Shangri-La and shit like that. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. That was almost my death warrant right there. Jesus fucking Christ. I almost fucking killed myself right there. That would have been actually pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. I would have had a good laugh. I would have had a good laugh. Like the easiest mission I did, or quest, and I just fucking still kill myself. I uh, had. Uh, here, let me put my fucking glasses on my face properly so you can read. He got me to watch War Dogs with him and would tell me stories of his time in the 82nd. I got pretty into the military history. Where, yeah, I mean, I had lots of like family that were in the military and shit. It's just like, nah, it's not. 
Military is like brainwashing people out here. I ain't about that. Just one of however. Did I not just use the knife? Yo, what the fuck? How come? Yo. <laughs> oh, it's another person. I was. I was. <laughs> I was about to say, yo, what in the fuck am I watching right now? Someone literally just like, what? I think math is my weak place. True, yeah. See, I like math and shit like that. Yeah, well, most of the time, people that come out of the government end up hating... Well, not the government, sorry. People that end up coming out of the military end up hating the government because they go into the fucking military thinking they're going in there for a purpose, and then they end up going over and just killing a bunch of innocent people half the time, and they're like, oh, shit, I didn't sign up to do this. And then they realize they're just a big pawn in the grand scheme of things, you know what I mean? Bring the message to Thalif. So let's get back out this way then. But my next platinum plan will be The Last of Us 2. How is The Last of Us 2? I haven't. How is The Last of Us 2, bro? I've never played it. I've heard such like I've heard such good reviews and like such bad reviews at the same time. Like I've heard people that absolutely just like love the game and like they swear by it and then there's people that just fucking hate it. Like where where like what do you think of it? <clears throat> During this development that's pretty sick. I don't know. What am I what am I doing here? Don't tell me I gotta go all the way back to all this bullshit. Bro, I gotta go through all this bullshit. There's no fucking shot. I gotta go through all Miguel played our ass. Fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. Dude, don't tell me I gotta go through all this bullshit, dog. There's no fucking way I gotta go through all of this again. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is foul. I don't even remember where the fuck I'm going. Like... My, look at my account on the leaderboards. That tell me if I'm a noob. Collecting W. Uh, uh, where is my? Where is that squares right there? Uh, collecting W doesn't even pop up on the. Oh, there we go. You're a noob or not? I mean, what boss? Here you. I mean, yeah, bad. You got some boss kills in there and shit. You got some boss killers in there and shit, bro. It's not that bad. You know what I mean? Your combat level is 95. Your overall... See, you're not that bad. You got like a mid-tier mid, mid, mid account, you know? You're a mid-tier account. There's nothing wrong with that. You got some like nice, almost base 70s across to the board I see. I, I see I see you you got nice base seventies across the board almost. That's super good, you know what I mean? That's pretty good. Nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna pet that dog. I'm gonna pet that dog. Trying to get that quest cape? Word. I'm trying to just get quests done. <laughs> I 
Bro, how the fuck do I get out of this bitch, bro? I'm fucking confused, my guy. Dude, I'm fucking confused as fuck. I do not know what I am doing here. I am so confused. Uh, pff, I, I just don't know. I am fucking confused, my guy. I have no idea where the fuck I'm going. You know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna do this. Rub, boom. Uh, no, the quest helper literally wasn't even telling me where the fuck to go. Like, it's the quest helper is open right now. The quest helper is open. And it wasn't highlighting the path for me how to get out. It was, <laughs> it was, it wasn't highlighting the path, so I'm just gonna fucking go this way. I'm just gonna teleport back to the GE. Like, I just, I can't deal with that shit. iPhone, World War, yeah, yeah, iPhone had World of War Zombies. And if I still had my first gen, if I still had my first gen iPhone, I would have it. Yeah, <laughs> Quest Helper ain't helping shit. Miguel, it helped me through the fucking maze, bro, but it sure as fuck didn't help me out, bro. <laughs> it helped me get through that fucking maze, but sure as fuck did not help me get out, man. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, you, kind of been a hell of a last for Yo, sheesh, what's up with that, Jay? Hope everything's going well for you, my man. Hope all is well, guy. Live, long, and prosper. Bro, I swear to fuck, if I gotta go back through that maze, man. I think I gotta go back through that maze, like, twice. Honestly. I should've just brought a Barrows teleport with me. But yeah, your account's pretty good, bro. Not the worst I've ever seen, that's for damn sure. I like how many kills you got, too. Like, 435 KC. That's pretty decent. You know? Barrows. Temp. You got some temp done. What is this boss? Leviathan? Shit. No way. I didn't know it looked like that. You got burned out super hard? Yeah, bro. Hey, uh, RuneScape is one of those games where it's like you play it for like fucking 12 fucking days straight or like three months straight. And then you just like get burnt out on the game. And then you end up like coming back to it a year later. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Actually, hang on. I might have a slide. Let me use this bank over here real quick. Let me see here real quick. Oh, we don't got any self tellies, but. Oh, that saved us so much time. Uh, come on. There we go.
Why am I not taking this bottom route? It's so much faster. Dude, am I stupid? I think I'm stupid. I think I'm fucking just retarded. Hey! What's up, Rocky? Oh, no. I didn't get to finish my... I gotta go check out my dog. Just give me a sec. Hey. Hey. My dog loves eating grass, but every time he eats grass, he just ends up making himself throw up. Like, he fucking just, like, he, if he could just sit there and eat grass every fucking day, that's what he would do. Lunch, dinner, breakfast, you know what I mean? But every time he eats it, he makes himself throw up. Every time. Found someone laying unconscious. What the sheep dog? Nah, just the Rocky dog, man. Just the Rocco dog. Oh, I got it. That's fucking good. This fucking guy. What are you, dirt? Like, what the fuck are you on, bro? Lay off the soil. <laughs> That's funny. What do you want, bro? Lay off the soil. Hey, Rox. Relax, boo-boos. Go lay down for a little bit, you know? Have a nice little nappy poo. You just fucking threw up everywhere. Go have a drink, man. Watch with that filthy mouth of yours. Ain't no girl's gonna want to kiss you after that, son. He's like, Dad, I lick my own penis. They all kiss me still. What do you mean? Uh, 
we're just going straight to G E, baby. Look at that. How is there no like recommended teleport to fucking? Oh, I guess it would be Varrock. How is there no recommended to teleport to Varrock for this quest? Like what? Am I missing something here? They want you to run past the pages. Yeah, seriously. I'm thinking of starting an Iron Man. Oh, what the fuck? Assign a diff shit, yeah. That'd be pretty interesting, honestly. Assign me to mining. <laughs> Assign me to mining. Wait, which way? Where am I? What am I supposed to be doing here? Uh, BIP. <laughs> Sound like the covert apps. Weedy up. We the ops. Yo, the x ray guy, what's up? It's the name of the end of this fucking quest. I hate questing in RuneScape, man. It's like the most boring shit unless you're like killing something. Otherwise, it's just a giant fucking fetch quest. It's so it's I take that bow. Go take that boat. Mm. 
It's just so annoying. Yeah, it really is annoying as fuck. Is that what I'm forgetting two days? Shit, I forget right after doing it. Half the time. Oh well, minecart. Where the fuck's the minecart, yo? Oh, there it is. <laughs> what level is in mine? Um in the bottom right here you can check out my levels. One more. You can also check out my levels. This is my name. Yeah, full outfit. I got the full outfit like six or seven times. Yeah. Still no pet. You were Johnson? Yeah, it took me forever to get my first set, and then after that, literally. Bro, I got... I I would save up, like, 100 crates at a time, and then open up 100 crates, right? I fucking... There was this one time I opened up 100 crates, and in that 100 crates, I got three sets of gloves, three tops, and three hoods. I was just like, wow. Like, just Wow. Just wow. That is diabolical, yeah. I wanted either like the tome, tome of fire, or like the pet, you know what I mean? And it was just, just fucking me raw, man. Gotta make an all night. Yeah, seriously.
You know what's funny? I could have. Oh my god. Could I just talk to that guy to get Mew instead of using the Ring of Wealth to teleport? Well, at least now I know. Climb along the western wall until I reach. What's his face? Oh, hallelujah. It was nice to know ya. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Open barricade. I got the pet from first pull. No way. Dude, that's fucking crazy. I don't even have my only pet in this game is a fucking cat. I don't have a pet yet. And I have like 80 million XP total. It's fucking wild. I was even doing like the best methods to get like 99 fishing, 99 cooking, uh, 99 fishing. I was doing like the best method to get pet and I still didn't get it. What the fuck, man? Fuck this game, bro. It's racist. Hates little white boys like me, man. I swear. I swear. <laughs> yeah, I'm racially motivated pet giving in RuneScape's code. You already know. It's using, it uses the person's webcam to like scan their face without their permission, you know? Facts. Facts. Heard it here first, homie. Just like, t yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yo, facts, bro. That's funny as fuck. <laughs> That's funny as fuck. Bro, I never want to have to go through all that bullshit ever again. Oh my god. What a waste of map space. All that shit is legitimate just filler. What a fuck. This is the dumbest quest in all of RuneScape. I swear to god. There's some stupid fucking quests in this game. This is the worst fucking quest I think I may have ever fucking tried. I gotta rip a fat fucking toke because this shit is mind-numbingly fucking boring. We're also putting on like a video. We're putting on some true crime. This elderly lady might look like a sweet old grandma, but she's living proof that there's no age limit when it comes to evil. If it hadn't been for a 911 call that caught every second of her victim's harrowing last moments, she might have gotten away with murder. And her victim? That would be her very own grandson. Okay, how did you get shot? Your grandma and grandpa shot you? My grandma and grandpa. Oh, my grandma and grandpa shot you? Yeah, I'm going to die. Okay, so you got shot in the head. Yeah, I'm going to die. This is the twisted case of Jonathan Hoffman. 
Before we begin, we would like to send our deepest sympathies to the loved ones of Jonathan Hoffman, who was taken from this life far too soon. It's 5 p.m. on the 18th of May, 2012, when Max Dashevsky receives a worrying call right, from his <laughs> good friend, Jonathan Hoffman. The yeah, two are jokes, seniors dude. at Farmington Central High School, an alternative high school in the upscale neighborhood of West Bloomfield Township near Detroit, Michigan, where they have been friends since the ninth grade. Oh, we met ninth grade in Miss Landing's class, which was an English class. We met because I sat by him and he looks at me, he's like, do you like Tupac? I'm like, yeah, I like Tupac. And then he's I like missing Tupac. Jonathan confesses to Max that he's just failed a court-ordered drug test, a condition of probation that he's Let been me some on Tupac. since police found marijuana in his vehicle two months earlier. Jonathan is worried. His grandmother, Sarah, he says, is furious. 17-year-old Jonathan has been living at his grandmother's condo since his parents' divorce and relocation to Arizona 10 months earlier. Initially, he had gone with his parents, but within weeks of their arrival, the family had received a devastating blow. His younger sister, Jessica, had been diagnosed with a benign brain tumor, requiring yeah, multiple surgeries and ongoing medical treatment. I mean, I was Between born when it was illegal for me as well. Sister's illness, I still Jonathan had been miserable. So, when his grandmother, Sarah, suggested that he return to West Bloomfield and stay with her while he finished his final year back at Farmington, he had been ecstatic. He would be happy staying there with his friends and finishing out his last year of high school. And she never, ever once told me that there were issues. Not everyone had been happy about the new arrangement. Jonathan's father, Michael, a prominent attorney, had seen some unsettling aspects to Sarah's character over the years. A retired school teacher and mother of five, Man, that Loki looks like my mom. Holy fuck. Four-year-old Sarah could be controlling, meddlesome, and ran a very My mom is nothing like ship. that, though. But yeah. she and her husband, Fred, age 85, had always doted on Jonathan. And with Jonathan pushing hard to go back, he eventually agreed. That was nine months ago. And now Jonathan was back in his element at Farmington oh High School, where he God. is known as a class clown. A uh, super again, smart oh. kid and a whiz with technology, he'd already earned himself a full-ride scholarship to Eastern Michigan University. Above all, friends know him as someone who is always happy-go-lucky, positive, and upbeat. Which is what makes this particular phone call all the more concerning for Max. Jonathan doesn't sound like his usual self at all. To Max, Jonathan sounds not just worried, but scared. The two friends agree to meet up that night. Jonathan tells Max he'll message him in the next half hour or so to confirm the time that Max can come pick him up. Max waits for that message. A half hour goes by, and there's no word from Jonathan. Max messages, then calls. No one answers. He doesn't know yet, but Jonathan will never answer his phone again. 20 minutes after hanging up from Max, West Bloomfield Township Police receive a 911 call from Brookview Lane, Maple Place Villas. It is the home of Sandra Lane, Jonathan's grandmother. 911, what's your emergency? Help, I've just been shot. Where? Huh? I've just been shot. Where are you at? 6372 Brookview Lane. Brookview in what city? Okay, I, I know we got help on the way. I promise you 
that, okay? You said, you said uh, you, it's in your chest? Yeah. Okay, did you get some kind of, can you, can you walk or do you, are you sitting? Yeah, that's fucked. Okay, yeah, okay, crazy. I don't want you to move. Okay. Uh, okay, just keep on breathing. Okay, I'm breathing. Okay, and it just happened? Are you there? Hello. Keep talking to me. Keep talking Hello. to me. Hello. Are you there? Hello. Can you can you keep talking you can't keep talking to me? Are you there, sir? The phone call has been placed by Jonathan, who tells the dispatcher that he's just been shot. When she asks who shot him, he tells her his grandmother. For nearly three minutes, he gasps and asks for help, telling her he's dying. His grandmother, he tells her, was gone for now, but as he's about to discover, it's not to get help. What comes next is nothing short of horrifying. This is crazy. Yeah, I just check. informed them. Jonathan pleads to his grandmother before the sound of multiple gunshot fire. After crying out in pain, Jonathan says down the phone, I just got shot again. Help, help. There's a pause before the sound of a woman's screams begin and a voice shouts repeatedly, let go, let go, let go. And then finally, I'll get you a drink of water. Shortly after 5.30 p.m., West Bloomfield police pull up alongside the manicured lawn of a condo on Brookfield Lane Why did in the quiet, so gated community Why, of Maple understand? Place Villas. A neighbor had even reported go sounds of gunfire. Go. In this enclave yeah, of gym. wealthy, mostly retired residents, crime is a rarity, let alone violent crime. But as Wait, officers exit their vehicles, they here? hear two bursts of gunfire here. ring out from the condo. Before they can enter, a woman appears behind the screen door. After following orders to drop her weapon, the petite elderly lady with fading red hair and blood on her clothes steps out the bamboozle. front door. She raises her hands in surrender and announces to police, I just murdered my grandson. As if this wasn't shocking enough, it's nothing compared to what's to come. Inside the home, officers are confronted by a bizarre scene Blood and bloodied footprints trail through almost every room of the home. There are blood smears on the walls and furniture. Bullet holes in the walls, shell casings littering the floor. Discarded at the front door is a Glock 17 9mm semi-automatic pistol. Later, during a forensic examination of the house, 19 rounds of ammunition and several magazines will be recovered from the home. Upstairs, officers find 17-year-old Jonathan Hoffman. He's lying on the floor, face down, in a pool of blood, with multiple gunshot wounds to his chest, arms, back, and stomach. Most of the shots had been delivered at close range. Paramedics rush him to Bostford Hospital in hopes of saving his life. But by 6 p.m., he has tragically succumbed to his injuries. Two days later, Sandra Lane is charged with open murder in the shooting of Jonathan open murder? and held Never without bond, which will murder? leave it to a jury to decide what whether she is guilty is of mean? first or second degree murder. Open she enters murder. a plea oh, okay. of not guilty. Jonathan's family, friends, and neighbors are rocked by grief and disbelief over the shooting. 
What on earth? Well, it's closed murder. That would be like they already have Jonathan. premeditation. The media are quick to get word of the controversial shooting and degree. offer up theories. Word Open spread murder, that Jonathan had failed the drug test for synthetic marijuana earlier that day. And journalists jump on the narrative of two neglectful parents who had dumped their drug-addled teen on their aging parents who had become overwhelmed. Now, of course, this case dates back to last May. Young Hoffman was living with his grandmother in West Bloomfield Township. Evidence shows that he did have the synthetic drug K2 or spice, a synthetic marijuana, in his system at the time of his death. He had gotten in trouble previously for the same drug, and his death comes on a heels of I mean, of if you just listen to that fucking call, bro, you know, young man is accused volumes. of killing his father with a baseball bat while high on K2. Sandra Lane's attorney says the drug she ain't. felt she had reason to fear for her life. The drug ain't the problem. That was dumped on her, that was involved in drugs, that was on probation and was difficult to control. How do you choose to leave your child with a grandparent if you have these feelings, if you're feeling angry? I don't know if they remembered what their childhood was like. A hot topic is the synthetic marijuana itself, known as K2 or Spice. Just two weeks before Jonathan's That's the death, dumbest shit I've a teenager ever named Tucker Cipriano K2. and a friend had smoked the drug before attacking his family, Who's killing fuck his father and marijuana? injuring his mother and brother. The drug has not yet retarded? been banned and is still sold in some gas stations and convenience stores for as little as $10. Meanwhile, reports are coming out that it causes aggression in users. Had the same scenario played out at Sandra's house, was it her motivation for shooting Jonathan? A tragic case of self-defense. According to the account Sandra would give to the police and later a jury, self-defense was exactly her motivation, or so she would say. Sandra had said that ever since he'd returned to West Bloomfield, Jonathan had been out of control. He was aggressive mm. and defiant, staying out all hours, hanging around teenagers who were heavily I mean, into drugs, boy. including <laughs> Spice. Jonathan, she said, was addicted to the drug. No one had told her before he came Homeboy to stay calls. or warned she's, her of what uh, she was dying taking on. The boy. on. And once his grandma arrived, just comes up, shoots him like three more little times. Interest in helping him Definitely or helping the her in how to deal with yeah. him. His dad, in particular, she said, had given up on the boy. Meanwhile, Jonathan would regularly go into rages where he would release his anger on objects, destroying things in his room, and yeah. kicking in the closet doors. In what kind of destruction do you even sit? In my house or before he came to live. Let's talk about in your house. The tank house. Uh, God said we uh, if we were disagreed uh, over an issue or something in his life was. It's his disturbing. life, bitch. Let him live his life. He would take it out on things. Um, if he fucks up, he's only got himself to blame. He would go as far as breaking his own equipment. He was a computer. I guess you could call him a computer geek since he was a very young. Then fits finger or times when things didn't go his way when break his own equipment on it or so various technical things he had in his room I don't know what they're called. How are you boy? He used to use Kick it. He didn't kick any things. He kicked in closet doors. He clicked, kicked it on monitor screen. Did you replace the monitor? Yes. Did you fix the doors? Yes. And place the phone? Yes. You were afraid when he did these things? Yes. I would I would remove myself and would tell calm down and I was afraid and I would remove myself until he calmed down. 
Police confirmed the account of Jonathan's drug use. On March the 17th, 2011, Jonathan had been pulled over and ticketed for marijuana possession and <laughs> drug paraphernalia. Later, at a court hearing, he had received a 93-day suspended sentence <laughs> with 12 months of probation and mandatory random drug tests. Friends of Jonathan's revealed to police that they had been concerned over his <laughs> use of drugs and had tried their best to discourage him from using them. Sandra had done her very best to get Jonathan to clean up his life, focus on his grades, and follow her rules. But he had defied her at every turn and was volatile, erratic, and violent. Her husband, Fred, confirmed that there had been this guy's constant name is and Waco heated Foundry? arguments between Sandra and Jonathan since the moment he'd arrived. Several times, Sandra said that she had called the police because Jonathan had been so out of control. She'd also called the school for help, but to no avail. On one occasion, she said, he had been so out of control while high on drugs that hospital staff had to strap him to a gurney. She pleaded with his parents to help her, but his father had not even bothered to come back to Michigan. She began to worry that Jonathan might kill her. She confided in her husband that she was scared of him and his friends. Desperate to keep her and her elderly husband safe and feeling out of options, she purchased a Glock 17 for protection on the chance that Jonathan or his friends attacked them. You told him that you were fearful of the friends, right? And you had told him that you were fearful to the point that you wanted the jewelry to be hidden, yes? Yes. Okay. And you're bringing a gun into your house, yes? Yes. Uh, a gun is a, you know, is a dangerous weapon, yes? yes? A gun, you know, can cause great bodily harm, yes? Yes. On the fateful day of May the 18th, she had driven Jonathan for his drug test that morning. The results had come back positive for spice, and he had been required to come back for a spice, second spice, test baby. later that afternoon. Oh, no, no, when no, no, that no, no, test no, no. had also come back positive, he had gone into a rage. In the car, he had been cursing and using street language, she said. He had repeatedly kicked the dashboard and grabbed at the steering wheel. Three times, she had to pull over, and once he tried to take the car keys. Once <laughs> at home, the argument had escalated I don't even know. further. I don't believe this bitch. Worried that he would go to jail, he planned to immediately leave for Arizona and was demanding $2,000 in cash from her and her car. She had refused to give him either. With her husband Fred out walking the dog, she was both terrified and desperate to talk some sense into him. So, so I she shot had gone that downstairs to her bedroom and retrieved the loaded handgun. She told the police, I wanted him to hear me. I wanted him to pay attention to me, that I would not give him the car. I would not let him take the car. I would not let him take the money. He had to listen. She had then climbed up the stairs back to Jonathan's bedroom with the loaded gun, where she found him in the bathroom. Instead of listening to her, he had sworn at her and lashed out, kicking her in the stomach and striking her on the head. You were walking to the law himself? Yes, I did. All right, now you're in the law. Yes. So you're walking to the loft, and you, did you have a conversation with him? Yes. What kind of conversation? It wasn't a conversation. Huh? Arguing. What is he saying to you? Swearing. He's yelling. Is he telling you he's taking the car? Yes. Where did he kick you? <laughs> there. Did he strike you? In the head. Sorry? The head. Did the head hear you? I mean, bro. I just don't see it. Tell us what happens when he kicks you, when it strikes you. Wouldn't she have been, like, bruised <laughs> and shit? Not the gun. How many times did you shoot the gun? I don't know. What happens when you shoot the gun? It was a struggle. What kind of struggle? He's running after me. And what are you doing? I'm running away. After a violent struggle and frenzied pursuit around the house, she had fled to the basement to hide. What are you trying to do? I get away. Stop him. So you're trying to get away from him. And why are you trying to get away from him? 
Listen. Next step. Scared. You're scared. What are you scared of? She had finally come out to see if he was all right, but he attacked her again and tried to grab the gun. They had struggled, so she fired to save herself. You remember yelling, let go, let go, let go? Yes. Do you shoot, if you remember? Why are you shooting? I don't know. You just do. I don't know. Are you still afraid? Yes. It sounded like a tale of two overwhelmed grandparents in Yo, over their Sean, heads, what's up, a situation dog? that had ultimately led to Sandra tragically shooting and killing her beloved grandson out of fear that he would hurt or kill her. But was this really how things unfolded? As the investigation gained traction, an altogether different picture of events began to emerge, and while just as tragic, it was far more chilling. First of the questionable statements that Sandro had made about Jonathan's violent nature, extensive interviews with those who knew Jonathan revealed that no one had ever known him to be violent. He had a reputation as a joker and a pacifist. At school, he was more likely to break up fights with humor and wit than to pursue them. Friends claimed to have seen no change in Jonathan in recent months, those who watched a movie with him the night before the shooting said that he was his same goofy self. Jonathan also had a very slight build. At just 5 feet 5 inches tall, weighing 110 pounds, he was not an imposing hulk of a boy, or more or less he was similar to the size of his grandmother. It would seem that only Sandra had seen Jonathan's violent rages, but even that now came into question. Her husband Fred said that he had seen the pair argue constantly and heatedly, but had never witnessed any violence of any kind, despite being in the house pretty much all of the time. He had noticed Sandra taking on responsibility for Jonathan in a very intense way. She regularly checked in with his teachers about his grades and set strict rules and guidelines for Jonathan. He hadn't followed them, and things had gone off the rails. Fred remembered telling Sandra to send the boy back to Arizona to his parents, but she had refused. Which brings us to her claim that Jonathan had been dumped on her. Her daughter, Jennifer, told police during the nine months that Jonathan had stayed with Sandra, he spoke to his mother every day and spent weekends with them once Bye. a month. In all that time, her mother had never once mentioned any problems between her and Jonathan, nor hinted that she couldn't cope or ask for help. In fact, quite the opposite. When Jennifer discovered that Jonathan was in trouble with the police for drug possession, she had argued with her mother over what to do with him. Jennifer had wanted to send him to a drug rehabilitation center or to take him back to Arizona. But her mother felt strongly that he should stay with her. In the end, Jennifer had given in and made the fateful decision to leave Jonathan in her care. It was true that police had been called to the home, but only on two occasions. On one of those, in March of 2012, Jonathan had called them himself after taking magic mushrooms and becoming paranoid that he was dying. According to the police report, when officers arrived at the home, he had not been aggressive, just scared. He had jumped into one of the police officer's arms. He had then been strapped to a gurney for his own safety. Four days after the magic mushroom incident, it had been Sandra who had called 911. She told dispatch that Jonathan was in a rage and trying to run away. Meanwhile, Jonathan told the operator that she was trying to get him into her car so he couldn't leave. In other words, she wanted to trap and lock him in her vehicle. Sandra could then be heard saying to Jonathan, I love you. I want us to get some help. When police arrived at the home on Brookview Lane, they found Jonathan shouting profanities in the street and being derogatory towards his grandmother. Police had offered to take action against Jonathan, but Sandra had insisted that she would handle it, and the incident had been written up as a typical parent-child verbal confrontation that had been resolved. 
To police, this was seeming less and less like a case of a violent teen spinning out of control and more like a case of a controlling matriarch determined to exert her will on an unruly teen. But it was the hearing held on April the 12th for drug possession and the Once probation that followed that, that seemed to tip Sandra over the edge. Until then, she had been determined to get Jonathan back onto a respectable path. But with graduation just around the corner and her window of opportunity getting smaller yeah, hey. by the day, it was looking more and more like a doomed mission. Cord? At yeah. this point, Sandra had many options. She could have called her daughter. She could have sent her grandson to rehab. Instead, she bought a semi-automatic pistol and took shooting lessons at a gun range. Sandra was determined to win yeah. this battle of wills Skip and here. gain control over her wayward grandson whatever the cost. Nice. Four days after Jonathan was placed on probation, was Sandra Lane applied for a Moral permit of the story to carry last a night, gun. My dad and decided to get shit-faced drunk after like four years, and I was kind of just dd in. Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, our old doctor, he's moving to Boise, which is like four hours away. He wanted to die in his house, but his boys are making him move out, and they're all yeah. fighting over the house, and who gets the money? It's a long story there. I but. remember you saying that, yeah. Yeah, they're forcing an old man to move out. He's like 92 or something, dude. <laughs> I, remember, I remember you telling me, yeah. They were all up there having their last cahoots. And... That's fucking pretty cool. Scotch. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, ever drink some scotch? scotch. Oh, yeah. Like a rich man scotch, yeah. Yeah, it's just smooth. On ice, baby. That's all he drinks. The doctor's going through two gallons in the last two weeks, bro. Give it just to like me the on most ice. Recent. Two, two half gallons of fucking scotch. <laughs> That's wild. Are you farming enemies or was Gucci? I was doing quests. Doing me some fucking quests, dog. You're gonna have to hop on your alt and help me get out of silver, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, did I already know? I'm in silver one for some reason, bro. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna log on to my Apex and see what level I am right now. You might have helped. Your other account was only like gold with crooks, didn't you play with a little bit? It was like plat. Fuck. <laughs> How am I today? I uh, choked the chicken this morning. Life's good. Literally, like, there's just, like, it's such a shit time of the year for work. Oh, fuck yeah. It's slow. Our economy's ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not even. Well, I don't know, but it's, it's probably like, different in Canada. I'm just. It's yeah. just like the weather. It's just, it's just you go to work and then like halfway through the day it just fucking starts pissing out like a forty mile an hour winds. You know. It's like why even it's show up? Pretty windy here. Yeah. Like I showed up this morning and we sat in our fucking truck for like two hours and the guys like, oh, well, let's go home. Get paid for five. <laughs> And it's like, you fucking had me wake up at 6 o'clock for this bullshit? And he's just like, what, you didn't want to get paid? I'm like, fuck, dude, I'm not I, I'm not the type of guy that needs to get paid for sitting in my fucking truck. Like, I don't give a fuck. And he's just like, oh, well, next time like, we're just going to show up. We home. call that a Taz, bro. It's just one of my dad's homies. He always, he could sit in his truck for three hours just smoking yeah. bowls and like... My, yeah. uh, my one uh, when I get to work, bro, I'm at work, you know? <laughs> my ex-boss, bro, my ex, well, not even boss, my ex, one foreman, he would sit in the car, truck literally all fucking for a 14-hour shift. He'd sit in the truck, and then me, my other co-worker, and my other co-worker, we would do our entire job site. We would do the entire job, and he would just sit in there. Something goes wrong, like, say, one of our measurements were off or something, right? We fuck up, and one of our measurements are off. They get a call from head office. He comes out and just starts screaming at us. The one day, me and my buddy, we just had enough. We turn around like, get your fat fucking ass out of the truck then and maybe fucking do something, you piece of shit. And he's just like, you're going to talk back to me like that. You're going to talk back to me. And like, yeah, motherfucker, you don't do shit. And you're getting paid fucking $40 an hour. And he's just like, oh, yeah, wait till I tell the office. I'm like, oh, yeah, wait till I tell the office. You're fucking not doing shit. I bet he didn't like that whole bit. That's funny as hell. No, after that, bro, after that fucking little ordeal, he was always out of the truck, making himself look busy. He wasn't doing a goddamn thing. He was walking around site, making himself look busy, talking to other people, other contractors and shit, you know? 
made his ass fucking work. <laughs> no, he wasn't working. He wasn't working. He would just go around and talking to people, but he would make it look like he was busy. You know what I mean? It's, it is kind of the foreman's job. He's not go even around supposed talking to do much. To, uh, yeah, uh, making sure I mean, people are doing their jobs and have their materials and their... Yeah, to a certain extent. And, like, I mean, his job was still to, like, fucking, if anything, supervise us. You know yeah, I mean? true. <laughs> Make sure you, your Cause, shit was right. Because all these contractors, they're not working for us. They're working for us. You know what I mean? True. Touche. So he technically should be... He should be working. If he's, if he's like, the lead <laughs> foreman of, like, the frame crew or whatever, yeah, he should be helping a little more. Yeah. There, there's, like, people above him, yeah? No, he was the lead foreman on for us. On our site. That's insane. <laughs> like, there's other people, of course, that, like, in our company that were above him. Like, you know what I mean? He was just some fucking Joe Schmo at the end of the day. He ended up getting fired, bro. Listen to this. This fucking idiot. Like, at our company, we have, like, a Home Depot she card. Herself a semi-automatic nine millimeter and we just go she told the buy whatever we need from Home Depot and charge to the company Home Depot card, right? She chose was a yeah, yeah. Shoot to kill this fucking idiot was going and buying, like, Ponca toy trucks and, and fucking bath bombs and all this bullshit for uh, Christmas and stuff, charging it to the company. And he end, the company ends up going, yo, why did you, why did you have $1,000 in children's toys charged to the company? And he's like, oh, I, I didn't think you guys would mind. If I got a little fucking no little something from my son, Brody or whatever the fuck his name was for Christmas, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna have to fire your ass." <laughs> and he's like, "What? You're gonna fire me for that? I've been doing it for years." And they're like, "What? Oh yeah, really? Yeah, you're definitely fired." <laughs> I've been doing it for years. What the hell, guys? Did you know that your wife had, in fact, prior Come on, to the man. 18th of 2012, purchased a gun? No. That's fucking wild. Did you know that your wife had taken the gun to a shooting range and shot or practiced shooting? No. On the day of the murder, Sandra and Jonathan had arrived home sometime after 4 <coughs> p.m. Just During pulled the gold, baby. About the day of the shooting, Fred Lane mentioned something that had struck the police as it's curious. A when skin. Sandra had returned home with Jonathan, she had asked Fred to take the dog for a walk Jeez. and specifically requested that he not return until she'd told him to. They had to stay out so long oh, the dog had fun. become tired and the two sat watching a basketball match. I was getting tired and the dog was getting tired. Okay, how are you? So we uh, watched uh, a basketball game. Dude, that's fucking crazy. This chick, like, goes and purchases this, like, grandma purchases a gun and shit. Like, the mom's like, I want my son back. And the grandma's like, no, no, I'll take care of him. He's, like, going through some drug problems. I'll straighten him out. She goes, purchases a gun, goes to your shooting range, all behind her, uh, like, the, her fucking, um, her husband's back. Tells her husband the day of the murder, yo, go for a walk and don't come home until I say so. So the guy goes and takes a walk and he's like, uh, me and the dog, we were getting tired, so I just sat and... You know, watch this basketball game, waiting for her to call. Like, bro, that is fucking diabolical. Uh, just like, <laughs> oh, and I heard the silence. Yeah, that's pretty insane. That is fucking crazy. What channel? Are you, are you watching a lot of the same channel, or are you kind of channel hop on these videos? Mm. It's all like the same channels that upload videos. Fear of her life. It seemed mm. more like the behavior of someone with a plan. That they wanted yeah, to act facts. out without interference or possibly a witness. Fred had agreed to go, something which also seemed unlikely if Jonathan had been a raging maniac that Sandra had described. But the really damning evidence against Sandra was. Yeah, I was probably don't want to play ranked at this storm that point day, today. Jonathan had answered a call no, you like from his friend Max, confirming we their it's in 14 plan minutes. For I'd rather play it than World's Edge, probably. That Jonathan had Bro, you want to hear the most funny shit, dog? Playing yesterday, playing Apex yesterday. Just you? Yeah, I was playing Apex yesterday. And fucking... What am I supposed to be doing here? Uh, okay. Sorry. I'm just trying to... Uh, no worries, dude. Figure out what the fuck's going on here. 
I do mm. like how in the event shop, they're the universal badge, or not badges, but calling cards. That's one thing I will. They're all universal frames that have been in there, you know? Mm, yeah. I mean, it's cool, but... It's decent. It's not, I didn't say it was cool. It was decent. It's like a 6 out of 10. It's that's, like the coolest part of the... It's cool, you know, but... Uh, I don't know. I'd rather... Rather not have to. You know what? Fuck this quest, dude. I'm just gonna come play Apex with you. Fuck it. Did you ever play like Age of Empires? Uh, no. No, not even like two or one. Mm, or zero. Damn. Did you ever play like Final Fantasy, like Tactics? Didn't like Final Fantasy. Still don't. Back when they were like OG, they had different companies making them. And they, like the OG, like two, this is like 1999 is when this game came out. It's pretty OG. Yeah. It's fun. You know what I used to like was um, Lord of the Rings Middle, Battle of Middle Earth. And it's like kind of like Age of Empires where it's like strategy based and you got to build up your city and all this bullshit. Was that the one where it was like kind of like Battlefront 2 but Lord of the Rings? And you could like pick your different dudes and... No, it's literally like a top down and it's kind of like you build up your city. You got to get like people in your city that produce resources so you can like produce troops and fuel your that own. sounds like age of empires yeah that's yeah. exactly what i'm saying that's, <laughs> it's like i played a uh, lord of the rings battle of middle earth which is kind of like that but i never that played sounds fire that actually sounds fire it did it, it was super good blair told me about this game i can't remember what the fuck it was called but it was like age of empires but way more in depth like you can go from third person into first person and shit it was insane. Oh, so you can like control the entire war of like the but, map, or you can go into and like, players or troops. Yeah, 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 it was insane. And they got like side quests and shit, and they get it was like the best looking game for that kind of thing that I'd seen. I like single player like is MMO it turn based kind of as well, ain't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go start up a stream, a short stream for Apex on my other channel. Bravo. I'll talk to you guys there. I like this guy.